Hello friends, this is video 2 of my CitizenCon coverage in which I'll go over some of the gameplay demo shown at the event. I hope to point out little details you might have missed and add some context to the entire playthrough. And maybe you can point out the details that I missed in the comments. If you'd like to see the rest of my CitizenCon coverage, check out the playlist in the video description below. And thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. Gameplay demos in Star Citizen have a rough history. For that reason, you should always take these with a grain of salt. That being said, what this gameplay demo shows seems completely possible in the next year, and is likely short of what we can expect in a year's time, not including the location. There are plenty of small features that are well into development that weren't shown in this demo, such as the new door interactivity from September Monthly Report, new MFDs from a year ago, security systems or lighting system interactions as we've seen in testing, the medical system which has since been released, cloud ambiance which, you know what, that's it, you get the idea. This is clearly set up to show off some specific styles of gameplay. Don't expect to play this exact scenario in the game, rather let's take a look at the tech being showcased and what it tells us. We start out waking up in the new 400i. This seems to be the new go-to way for the demo to start, revealing a new ship. Let's see if it sticks next year. We move up through the neck of the ship into the cockpit and take our first look at Pyro 3. Covered in the fluffiest looking sea of clouds I've ever seen. Complete with lumps, bumps, pancakes, tomatoes, and some bigger lumps. As we moved towards and through these clouds, you really got to appreciate the overall great lighting which we've been reading about in some of the monthly reports lately, particularly its September monthly report. These very well may be faked here, but we've seen the development on them. The precipitation on the windscreen and darkening are nice touches as well as you move through the clouds. As we continue, Todd Pappy explains that we're on a mission to obtain some artifact. Um, we've come here for a mission to acquire an artifact. Um, the use of the word mission seems weird as there's never actually any direction and the mission acquisition that usually takes place in the beginning of the demo simply didn't happen this time. So this is likely just an open-ended sandbox sequence for the dev to play through with the features being shown, and not something narratively driven like an actual in-game mission. As the ship floats down ceremoniously into the outpost, I can't help but fall in love with the very obviously highlighted visual and audio effects during that landing. The ship thruster volumes are actually already in the game, but that audio? Mmm, I don't know about that. After getting a quick tour of what I find to be the best designed mid-sized ship interior so far, we got to get a first-hand experience with the organic assets presented earlier in the panel. I appreciate that kind of consistency. We immediately also got to see the anti-air missile turrets which are already wreaking havoc on players in the game, being added the very day this demonstration aired. We also can see some idle animations from the NPCs though the camera avoids looking down here. And as the character continued to move across the outpost, it's worth noting that AI are navigating around the planet side here. This has been a struggle and a major blocker for planet side missions and gameplay. It's something we've been seeing in the monthly reports a lot recently and is likely one of the greatest features to see functioning in this demo. We'll have to watch this one closely in the next few monthly updates. As we move inside, the airlocks here have great atmosphere about them and some intense lighting and sound. The dynamic lighting is actually a feature that has been mentioned in recent monthly reports to be newly added. And as a player moves past the not so responsive AI inside, we enter a room similar to the art we saw earlier. From here we catch plenty of different new AI idol animations, the cook behavior we've heard about in the monthly reports, and some overly proper looking security for this frontier outpost in the lawless pyro system. The change in materials in the walls and the grounds of the area are also a great change of the scenery in my opinion. I can't wait to see more of these materials in maybe some safer areas. As we leave the building, we get to see the new hair models as well as another new asset, 
the backpack. While these existed in game before, they weren't a real solution to storage needs. Now, backpacks are going to be standalone and able to be filled with anything that will fit. We've already been doing this a lot in game as the edition was released the same day as this demo. And then while the design has some work to be done as you'll see later on in this demo, the functionality is very much appreciated. Now we move on to the main scenario in the demo, the exchange. The scenario uses an exchange model that's pretty familiar with no real changes other than the NPC's idle animations. The item retrieval is something we've seen in Squadron 42, but not in Star Citizen. Everything about the scenario overall was pretty straightforward. I gotta say, I can't stress enough though that the NPCs not staring at me dead in the eyes is really gonna be a nice touch. Now the next approach is a bit different from that first exchange. This demo is meant to show the difference in choice that's open to you in these scenarios. This won't be related to a mission or any specific event, this will be something that you should be able to do anywhere you go in the game. Many games flaunt this as a big feature that leads to many branching narratives, Star Citizen being one of them. But this game has succeeded so far in building choice and consequence into a lot of key parts of the game. Maybe they'll be able to succeed with missions as well. It's good to remember here that Pyro is a very lawless system, but there are still factions of authority. Armistice zones will be a thing of the past with new security systems and you'll be able to attack whoever you please if you're ready for the consequences. In this instance, that's exactly what we do. So the idea here is that the reputation outlook of everybody who is present on you will be affected by your actions. It'll be interesting to know what happens when a third party is present for all of this and how their view of you may change. But what I'm really excited to see here is the difference in combat behaviors. The civilian gets the hell out of there while the security moves to you. Even then, the majority of security appears to bunker down and take cover. There's no knowing what if anything affected this behavior, but it's worth noting that for a game with mm, not great FPS experiences, this is a good sign. After the shootout during these evasion scenes, we got into the famous crawl spaces that appear in many Star Citizen demos. Some not so great AI work, a shootout inside, and then a shootout outside, and this starts to kind of feel like another demo I've seen recently. Even the chase scene felt a bit obvious. But overall, I felt the escape was too easy up until this point. Now, the AI isn't great, and this is a demo, but I think everybody is hoping it'll take a bit more planning than this to steal a 5 million UE artifact. Of course, the player is soon blown out of the sky by those missile turrets we saw earlier, so it seems you'll definitely want to team up in some way. The next and final scenario is a beautiful one. This is also the only part of this whole demonstration that included the HUD for whatever reason. This is a scenario that plays on reputation again. I think this would have been a great moment for Tony Z to reference when talking about reputation later on in my coverage, but we just didn't get very many details. Now using the same location with this different scenario was a great way to showcase more gameplay with less work needed to be put into the locations for the demo. This is also a good opportunity to showcase some sandbox gameplay on a small scale. Star Citizen has never really had stealth gameplay. It's always been pretty much impossible to sneak past AI. That being said, maybe the stealth was too good here. As development continues, it appears stealth gameplay is set to be an option for players in the near future. As we move through the demo, the stealth segments played out kind of like your usual not so great stealth segments. The AI not noticing friends being gunned down next to them, people spontaneously losing peripheral vision, chucking audible distractions directly in front of people's faces to trick them. And then there's this. Once the exterior portion of this stealth mission was done, we moved inside the base, where we again got to see some of that over-engineering that, while probably slowing down the assets a bit and complicating development, does one extra step to build detail into this game. There's even loot involved, and a little bit of puzzle solving. Loot also being something being added to the very next update. Something that comes up later in the demo is the cutting section. There's always a cutting section. But at what is likely the easiest moment for the already completed art and animation cutting tool to be shown off with a fancy new application, they actually opted to use the same old multi-tool. 
But back to that sneaking around, during all this navigation around the outpost, the place actually felt huge to me. I'm sure it's not, but it's substantially better than any outpost bunker or space station that we've encountered so far. After coming back above ground in the outpost, just like in 2019, we got another disguise component to the stealth gameplay. Now this is probably one of the likeliest features here to not actually be in the game by this time next year. And it's also the likeliest part to have actually been faked in this demo. But with reputation now persistent in the game, this could be possible with the systems that they have. We just don't know if they're doing it yet. We'll keep an eye on it for next year. Finally, after finding the dealer, killing him, and making our way to his safe in the bedroom, we get to see this lockbox with a code that can be found and retrieved in order to be opened. This gameplay is actually already in the game in prison, and by this time next year we'll hopefully have hacking which can be added to these security systems. Something also pointed out here by the way is the multi-item interactions going on, which falls in line with some of the higher levels of interaction CIG is currently working on, such as things like zero-g push and pull, physicalized weapon handling, and some of the locomotion they've done with the new gurneys and trolleys. This demo overall was a good display of the game in the next year, in my opinion, but it does seem like a very clear sign that they no longer want to fake features just to show them off, even if they are coming in the next year. Surprisingly, this demo actually didn't have a big first like I spoke about in my CitizenCon preview, and it shows in some of the disappointment around the community from people who feel they didn't show something new. It was a good look at likely the next two to three updates, save for the location. The problem with that is that we already know a lot of what's being worked on for the next six months. And while much of it didn't actually show up here, it's simply just not as surprising. While it is a bit disappointing, this could also be a great way to temper expectations for the event going forward, and get back on track with showing the proper close at hand features at CitizenCon. It may not have introduced a flashy pivotal moment in Star Citizen gameplay, but it did a good job of highlighting something that was never really possible in any form of PvE scenario before. Choice. And that will hopefully continue to expand and provide new forms of gameplay for players. While this may not have been the result everybody wanted and most certainly wasn't perfect, this gameplay demo may very well have done exactly what CIG wanted. What I would like to see now is a Star Citizen Live episode dedicated to showing us the process of playing and recording this segment. I think that would be a great way of showing what is and isn't actually functioning there, and go into more depth on what the plans are for what we're seeing with this outpost. But that probably won't happen. After the demo, we got to learn briefly how the location and the artifact were made. I'm guessing to not spoil the surprise during the demo, they moved these after it. This talked about the materials development, supporting assets, and design processes of both of these key assets. The modular outpost building was especially interesting given the vast amount of outposts needed in the game. The tool sounds really powerful when it comes to building locations, and it's something we'll talk about in one of my next videos covering CitizenCon. With another confirmation that Pyro and server meshing will come out with 4.0 at who knows when, we close out with a scissor road with some in-engine shots of the upcoming Pyro system. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the CitizenCon gameplay demo. If you have more specific questions, you can ask me on my Twitch streams, Discord, or even on Twitter. And if you'd like more development news about Star Citizen, you can also subscribe here. I hope you learned something in this one, and I'll catch you in the next.